Yeah. You know what I really feel about last year's season? Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you and I am the best reporter on the Eagles. I feel like we one power back away from going to the Super Bowl for two years in a row. You don't lose the game against the Panthers if Jay Ajayi is there. In my opinion, you also don't lose the game against the Titans. Did Jay Ajayi play against the Titans? I believe, I don't, I don't think so. But you don't lose, we lost a lot of games simply because we had the lack of a power back. We lost a lot of games because we were not able to run the ball when it mattered the most, when it was time to close out games, when it was time to hold the lead. Mind you, we only lost one game last season by more than seven points. That lets you know the run game suffered. That lets you know offensive play calling suffered. Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills are coming back. The impact was felt for weeks without Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills on the rise. It was felt for weeks. It forced Crevion LeBlanc and it forced Devontae Maddox and it forced Russell Douglas to grow up quick. It forced them to simply grow up quick. Now, with that being said, these guys have grown up quick. Now you got guys who have played in playoff games. You got guys who've played in playoff games. Avanti Maddox has played in the playoff game. Ronald Darby's played in the playoff game. Crevion LeBlanc has played in the playoff game. Started. Russell Douglas has started and played in the playoff game. Rodney McLeod started and played in the playoff game. Jalen Mills, you got an entire secondary who has put in work in the playoffs. That speaks volumes. Now, I'm really impressed with the talent that we got coming off the injury reserve. I'm really impressed with the talent we, co we got coming back. These injured players were monumental and huge to our success. Do you know the job of Jim Schwartz was really, really hard trying to replace these cornerbacks? Because not only do you, you can't just plug somebody in, you got to get them up to snuff. You got to find out their weaknesses. You got to find out where they can perform the best, with situations, with plays that you're going to get the best out of these guys. You got to do all that in a few weeks, and Jim Schwartz was up to the task. Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills and Rodney McLeod. The impact was felt throughout the secondary. I think we had the most injury riddled secondary in all of the National Football League. You can't discount the heart of the Philadelphia Eagles. Losing Jay and Jai meant everything to us as well. We were, we were not able to sustain drives. Do you know that Josh Adams did not convert a third and one or a fourth and one the entire season last year? He was the biggest guy on our team. He was looked at as the power back. He didn't run with a lot of power at times and he led the team in rushing. But not one of those yards was for a third and one or a fourth and one. Do you know those plays keep drives alive? Ah. <sighs> Derek Barnett. You lose Derek Barnett and then you you shift you shift the way that the depth on the uh, defensive line has to be maneuvered by Jim Schwartz. We have a rotational front when it comes to defensive players. We bring guys in in waves. That's what we do. Everybody gets a piece of the pie. The pie had to get bigger for some guys with the absence of Derek Barnett. How huge is Derek Barnett? You remember the strip sack on Tom Brady in the Super Bowl by Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett picking it up? Derek Barnett is one of the best pass rushers in the league, in my opinion. I've seen so much tape on Derek Barnett, the swim moves, the bull rushes. Derek Barnett can't be duplicated at times. Didn't Derek Barnett break Reggie White record in college? A healthy Derek Barnett is a problem. Period. Matt Collins and uh, Matt Collins and Josh Sweat. Now you really don't know what you're gonna get out of those guys anyway. But that's depth, guys, that 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 injuries have plagued. Injury. Injuries have plagued the way that we want to play the game of football in Philadelphia. It really has. But in a lot of ways, we can't sit here and say the season was a wash either. Yeah, we backdoored our way in the playoffs. Yeah, we got there. You know, the many faces of the NFL would like to have us believe so many different things. Since when is it ever wrong to make the playoffs? No matter how you make it, as long as you get there. Teams have made the playoffs at 8-8. Eight and eight. Wild card teams have won Super Bowls. Today's NFL kind of disgusts me with the way that these reporters are ranting and raving and hooting and hollering about stuff like that. It really disgusts me with the way that these reporters are going about their business. If you listen to a lot of ESPN, a first time guy listening to ESPN, you will come away with the notion that Baker Mayfield is the greatest quarterback in the game and Saquon Barkley is the best running back in the game. How? Two rookies? I know we're in awe of their ability, but you gotta be real at some point. Now this praise that Baker Mayfield is getting, Baker Mayfield is a bad boy. But we're not going to sit here and talk about Baker Mayfield like he better than Carson Wentz. We're not going to sit here and talk about Baker Mayfield like he better than, uh, um, he might he got a lot of guys, but he ain't got Carson. I, don't, I, I think the potential is there. Not to get Carson, though. 
We can come on, man. Saquon Barkley didn't lead the league in rushing, and they got a lot of people bent out of shape. That's the best running back to me, the one that leads the league in rushing. Now listen, man. We're gonna put our game face on this season. It's a revenge, it's a revenge tour for Carson Wentz, but we also know that it's a revenge tour for a lot of people who were injured last year and had to watch their brother struggle. With these guys coming back, you get one of the deepest, youngest cornerback cores in the all the National Football League. Ronald Darby is under 25, 25 or under, I believe. Jalen Mills is 25 and under. I, I, every cornerback that I'm about to name is under 25 or 25. Avante Maddox, Crevion LeBlanc. I mean, if we drafted one, I'm pretty sure he's under 25. You know what I'm saying? These guys are young with playoff wins at the position. These guys are about to take it to a next level. It's about to be a revenge tour all around. It's not just a Carson Wentz revenge tour. Alshon Jeffrey got some animosity with dropping that ball. Jalen Mills feel bad about getting beat on double moves. Fletcher Cox feels like it needs to be more respect put on his name. Zach Ertz as well. With all the accomplishments that these guys got, a lot of haters like to still shortchange how brilliant this roster is. You know, they think it's crazy for us to say that we got the best roster in football when the proof is in the pudding, when it's on paper already. You know what I mean? They want to say we crazy for feeling like we're the best team in the NFC East, clearly. When the proof is there, we have no dysfunction in our locker room like the Dallas Cowboys do. You know what I mean? We have none of that. Now, they hate the Eagles. I understand that they hate the Eagles. But you got to know some of Eagles content creators. We represent the Philadelphia Eagles, so they got no choice but to hate us. I say Jordan Howard, a top 10 running back. They got to say the opposite because they haters. They got to hate everything. I say Darren Sproles got a Hall of Fame resume. I break it down why they're not debating the stats. They just got to hate on the video. But you know what haters also bring? Haters also bring attention. I'll tell you one thing to all my haters, man. All the content creators that, that like to hate, blatant hate, come in the comment section and hate. That's not how you're supposed to move as a man. That's just how I feel about the situation, man. Now, we could debate. Now, you actually got a lot of love and respect for Law Nation and guys like that. We could debate and we could settle and we could talk about how we feel about our team. But what we can do is we can't hate on another man's opinion. Now, my, all my opinions is fact-based, whether you like it or not. At the end of the day, I've not, I've not got on the camera and told you something that I couldn't back up. Jordan Howard's a top 10 running back. Darius Sproles got a Hall of Fame resume. Why are y'all mad about the facts? Carson Wentz is better than Dak Prescott. Why are you mad about the facts? This entire offseason, there's been a bunch of, there's been a bunch of, a bunch of married men. These men are like married together. They don't want to go against each other. They don't want to go against the grain. They don't want to have a football opinion with another man. They're only comfortable with men who agree with them. Yes, it's beta maleism. They're only comfortable with men that agree with them. I'm comfortable with talking to the guy who don't agree with me all the time. Who don't? And we could do that respectful all day. I don't agree that the Dallas Cowboys are better than the Philadelphia Eagles. It's actually ridiculous to even think that. I don't agree that the Dallas Cowboys are America's team. I agree with that once our starters get back and get healthy, a lot of starters we missed last year and combine them with the new talent that we just got on the roster with the free agent acquisitions, the trades or whatnot, I believe that we are going to punish a lot of teams this season. I believe that this is a, a team-based revenge tour. I think Howie Roseman even wants revenge at this point. Eagles ain't got no cap space. They're not gonna be able to sign their free agents. Howie said, hold my bear. Do you understand how we move? We just different. We different and you gotta respect it. I don't fear nobody in the NFC East. I don't fear anybody in the NFC East and I'm, they're gonna have to show me this season. And I believe we are gonna put a lot of spankings on a lot of teams in the NFC East. And that's how we coming. When these guys get back healthy, the impact that these injuries had on the team and we were still able to make the playoffs, Ronald Darby is the impact player for us. So is Jalen Mills, so is Ronald McLeod, so, so was Jay Ajayi, so was Corey Clement, so was Derek Barnett. I'm talking about these were impact players. Impact players. Do you realize how we almost didn't even beat, we shouldn't even beat Atlanta in week one last year. We shouldn't have. Nelson Aguilar was the only receiver out there. Alshon Jeffrey ain't come back to like week three, week four. We should not have even beat Atlanta. But we did it. We willed it. We willed it. 
We well coached. We well balanced. 